For more on China's gaming industry, my colleague Sean Caleb spoke with Anna Gunde, founder and CEO of Payment Wall from Kyiv, Ukraine. Sean asked uh, how the absence of Sony and Microsoft is likely to impact the business. If you look at the last years, uh, I, I wouldn't say that Microsoft and uh, the other companies had big boots or big presence, mm -hmm. but they of course had a, a large number of uh, team members attending uh, to broker deals and uh, to get you know, a Chinese game developers on their platforms. Um, uh, but if you look at Tencent and uh, other Chinese companies like NetEase, uh, they're both our customers, by the way. Um, they uh, do, uh, of course, have big presence. I'd like to boast um, their, you know, uh, size uh, mm -hmm. a, a, in having big booths, big presence, and a lot of media uh, attention and so on. So I would say um, uh, it, this show is not that big for Microsoft. I would say E3 uh, would be the bigger show for Microsoft in LA. Uh, and, you know, that show has been suffering as well, uh, not because of coronavirus, but more like uh, participants um, kind of not getting along together and slowly um, getting away from the show. Our companies are spending more and more money on online right now. And indeed, a lot of the expos did either go online or they were canceled. But let's talk about the effect of the pandemic and the limited scale of this year's gaming show. What are the, going to be the lingering effects of that? The, the, the shows allow a physical contact uh, and you can basically um, uh, randomly run into someone that you want to meet and you can read their badge and you can broker a deal. Uh, so, or you can attend, let's say, uh, a dinner and then you can get to meet the person that you're intending to meet. Uh, so um, I think... It, the gaming shows allow for random meetings to take place and also uh, for, um, uh, you know, intended uh, meetings to be taking place. Uh, it's really difficult to schedule meetings at these shows because they're so big in size. Uh, so I wouldn't say that they're that efficient, actually. There's another show in uh, Barcelona, MWC, Mobile World Congress. It has 100,000 attendees. I mean, how do you get to, you know, meet everybody <laughs> at the show? You can't. You can only meet maybe five, ten people if they have the time for it. And the most of the time that you spend trying to go into the show and get out of the show with masses of people uh, trying to scan their badges and so on. So these gaming shows uh, are also similar to that. And uh, there's just too many people trying to get in, too many people trying to get out. There's a big inefficiency to that. China's gaming uh, online expanded about 22% uh, the first half of this year. Was that good or could it have done better under the pandemic considering a lot of people are home looking at their computer screens uh, i can give you the stats from my company we provide uh, payment solutions for game companies um, we had a 44 percent increase um uh for the last for the first two months uh and then it dropped down to about uh, 30 or so percent uh for the third month of the pandemic well now china entered the pandemic about a month and a half or two months ahead of the uh, United States. Um, and um, we uh, don't monetize that much the Chinese market because Chinese game companies usually use their own monetization uh, partners and so on in China. And there's only a few options there, uh, WeChat Pay and Alipay and so on and bank transfers. Uh, so I only have the stats for um, the Western markets and the Western markets um, uh, had that kind of an increase. Uh, I would say um, the disposable income available in the United States is much higher for gaming. So, uh, and people become more addicted to games and they spend a lot more money than in China. I think in China, they were more worried and watching the news and they probably didn't spend as much. Interesting. What do you think will be the lingering effects from the pandemic? Will we see more online expos, conferences? Will we see um, any kind of significant change? Uh, for sure. Uh, I think uh, I think people realize, g uh, companies realize that they don't want to spend this kind of money uh, having the boots and uh, having to fly over their team members, um, uh, planning this a year ahead of time to make sure that it's not a fiasco. When you show up at the conference, your boots is not ready and things like that. <laughs> so uh, I think all of this uh, drama is now um, uh, going to be reduced down to maybe half, I would say. Uh, half of it will be concluded online and half of it will be in person, but more in like casual gatherings and so on, dinners and smaller events, I would say. I don't think there's gonna be that many big shows anymore. On a really quickly, what effect is 5G gonna have on this industry? Uh, 5G is a uh, uh, big thing because uh, it's gonna stream the data to your phone 
uh, in a much more reliable way and also faster and also the bandwidth is going to increase. So that means you're going to have a richer content available at the phone level. You don't have to have a computer anymore to be able to access the data uh, and uh, have more richer experiences in gaming especially. Uh, I think in, especially for gaming, uh, this is going to change um, uh, like let's say how the developing countries play games. Uh, and they'll be able to use their phones to play these MMORPGs and more advanced games that require more graphics.